Chalk brood is caused by the fungus Ascospheria apis. Larvae are infected either when they eat fungal spores or contact them on the skin. Like most fungi, it grows well in cool, damp conditions. If a larva is infected and then cooled, spores may germinate in its body. Fungi kill a larva by robbing its nutrients, and after the larva is dead, fungi spread throughout its body. Sometimes you can diagnose this disease from the hive entrance. These are the remains of dead larvae that house bees discarded. A larva dead from chalk brood seems to swell as the fungus grows to fill the entire cell. At this stage, the larva is chalky white, hence the disease's name. Next, the larva shrinks to a hard, whitish-gray mummy. As the fungus matures, it forms dark fruiting bodies on the mummy's surface. Bees remove these black mummies, and you can see dozens of them on the floor or at the entrance. Most apiculturists consider chalk brood a minor disease, but beekeepers sometimes report severe infestations. There is no chemotherapeutic agent registered for controlling this disease in the United States. Bearing in mind that fungi thrive in cool, damp conditions, keep hives well ventilated year-round. Don't place hives in low spots where cool, damp air accumulates. Tall grass at hive entrances impairs good ventilation, so keep it mowed. Make sure hives are not too shaded. Lean hives forward so rainwater drains out the entrance. It never hurts to requeen an infected colony. This helps its population size rebound and eliminates what may be a genetically susceptible stock. Sac brood is a viral disease. Larvae become infected when they are only a few days old, but usually do not die until they are capped. Dead larvae are elongated in their cells, but visibly shriveled, and their heads are curved upward and slightly darkened. If you remove a dead larva, you can see it is watery, but its skin is tough. The overall look is a flaccid sac, hence the disease's name. Since this is a viral disease, there are no chemotherapeutic agents for its control. Often the disease disappears on its own. If you find an infected colony, requeen it and give it healthy brood from another colony. The greater wax moth, Galeria melanella, was introduced to North America by European settlers by way of contaminated beehives. Adult moths lay eggs in or near bee colonies, and the newly hatched larvae enter a hive, tunnel through combs, eat pollen and other debris, and, in so doing, plaster combs with webbing and feces. Sometimes the webbing traps young emerging bees, and they eventually die in their cells, a condition called galeriasis. When a colony's adult population is diminished, whether from disease, mites, pesticides, queenlessness, or absconding, wax moth numbers explode. The combs from such a colony are completely destroyed within days. The best control against wax moths in living colonies is simply to keep strong hives. Large numbers of adult bees effectively kill moth larvae and limit their populations. With stored equipment, we don't have the luxury of a bee population to do the policing for us. Most beekeepers fumigate their supers to kill and prevent moths. Paradichlorobenzene, or PDB crystals, are the safest fumigant used by most hobbyists. Stack supers no higher than five hive bodies. Place six tablespoons of crystals on a piece of paper on the top super. Crystals evaporate, and the vapor descends through the stack.
Cover the supers with a lid, but don't press down too tightly. I use a clean excluder as a spacer to allow air to circulate over the crystals so they can evaporate. And remember, check the crystals at least once a month and replace them as needed. Do not fumigate combs with PDB crystals if they contain honey for human consumption. Air out supers before you put them on colonies. Since their discovery in the United States in 1984, tracheal mites have been a leading problem for beekeepers in this country. These microscopic mites live most of their lives in the tracheae, or breathing tubes, of adult bees. Inside this protected environment, the mite pierces the tracheal wall, sucks the blood of the bee, and lays eggs. Young mites emerge, feed, mate, and the young females leave the trachea and seek another bee to start the cycle again. Tracheal mites severely damage the breathing tubes and flight muscles of bees. With a microscope, one can see mite-damaged tracheae, littered with debris and slashed with feeding wounds. If you want your bees tested, kill and preserve 50 to 100 bees in ordinary rubbing alcohol. Then contact your county extension agent for help in finding a diagnostic service. Bees must be dissected and microscopically examined to test for tracheal mites. The bee is pinned through its thorax into a dish of beeswax. The bee is flooded with alcohol and examined under a microscope at 20 or 40x magnification. The head is removed together with the front pair of legs. In this specimen, you can immediately see the darkened tracheal tube on the left. The collar of exoskeleton is removed to fully expose both tracheal tubes. The tube on the left is heavily infested. You can see the dark scars caused by feeding mites. The tube on the right is uninfested. There are no mites, debris, or scars. As the percentage of infested bees in a colony increases, the overall health of the colony degenerates. High levels of tracheal mites reduce colony brood production and winter survival. There are two miticides registered in the United States for tracheal mite control. Menthol in 50 gram packets can be applied in autumn or spring when there is no marketable nectar flow. First, remove all supers with marketable honey from the hives. Enclose 50 grams, or 1.8 ounces, of menthol in a 7 inch square porous packet. If daytime hives are 60 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit, Place the packet on the top bars above the clustering bees. If highs are 80 degrees or higher, place the packet on the bottom board. Leave menthol in the hive continuously for 10 to 12 weeks, but do not use it during a honey flow. Just recently, the Environmental Protection Agency has approved the use of Miticure plastic strips in the treatment of tracheal mites. In using these, all supers containing marketable honey must first be removed. Three Miticure strips should then be placed in each hive body, one strip between frames 4 and 5, 5 and 6, and 6 and 7. Leave the strips in the hive for no more than six 